Hey everyone and welcome back to Remember This Tech. In today's episode, I'm going to be doing a little bit different uh, video in that I've got five, five entry level cheap SSDs and we're gonna be doing some rudimentary tests on them. Crystal disk mark, a few other things. And maybe I'll get around to opening up a few to see what kind of controllers they have on here for the data transfer and management. Pretty much cheap, low cost uh, SSDs. With the rising cost of SSD storage and NVMe drives nowadays, you may be tempted to go for one of these low cost disks. How cheap are you prepared to go? And what performance hits are you gonna take if you buy one of these cheap drives? We've got the wow. Kung Fu disc, and this one is a 256 gig drive, and they're all SATA 3, so you know they technically will max out at 550, but I don't really know if they're actually gonna hit that. This one came in around $9 shipped on AliExpress, but the prices are going up as I film this, so who knows what they'll be when, they, when this video posts. The next one is a Poo Skill. This is a SATA 3, 128 gig drive. It says unleash your skills, but will it unleash my skills? And then this is the Golden Fur. And this is a 128 gig SSD. And this came in around $8 for that. And then we have a Wall Ram, 128 gig SATA 3 SSD. And the last on the list, the Patriot Burst Elite, 128 gig drive and these are now unfortunately hovering around 15 to 17.99 or more for this drive, just because the prices have gone through the roof. Must be silicon shortage, I don't know. Hence the reason why for this video is to give you an overview of what the best bang for your buck drive would be. Now technically you might wanna go for a NVMe drive if you have a newer system because they can provide up to 10 times in some cases the speed and throughput for read and write and they might not have the limitations um, where you start writing and writing and after a certain amount of time where your performance will go from here and tank and we'll come up with the results and compare them. What's the best bang for your buck for these cheap SSDs and these trying times. Come on, this is exciting, completely new on this channel, let's get to it, come on. For our test bench system, we're gonna be using my ASUS Prime B550 Plus motherboard with a AMD Ryzen 5700X eight core CPU. This system, has SATA 3 and NVMe, all the bells and whistles, so it will, will not hold the system back.
So my final thoughts, summarizing this up. Let me look at my notes here. So the Golden Fury 128 gig SSD utilizes the Yi Stores YS9082HP SSD controller. Poo Skill 128 gig SSD uses the Silicon Motion SM2258XT controller chip chip and the Patriot Burst Elite 120 gig SSD appears to use I think the Silicon Motion controller chip. The following cheap SSDs that I tested use the Silicon Motion SM 2259 XT controller chip, the wall RAM and the Hua disk. Some things to note, the Crucial BX500 also uses this chip. And also some of the Silicon Power SATA SSDs, some A-Data SSDs like the SC680 and the and Mushkin and some of its source drives SSDs use the same controller chip. So these SSDs, the wall RAM, the wow disk, you're not really getting the cheapest of the cheap memory controller. You're actually getting controllers that name brand big, bigger companies use for their SSDs. So essentially you're getting like a mini version of a BX500 um, Crucial, right? Imagine getting a cheap SSD almost the same as a Crucial BX500 for almost half the price, albeit possibly lacking warranty or service support. But let's face it, some of these drives claim to have a three year or more warranty, but shipping the drive back to get the warranty service might actually cost more than it would be to purchase a brand new cheap drive. So, and I could not find out what any of the memory chips were for the cheap SSDs. I didn't throw this in the beginning, but I threw it in in the test just for a result because it's the highest priced uh, cheap SSD on the list. Also the most capacity at 480 gig. The Lexar NS100 uses the Marvel 88 NV1120 controller chip. What will I use these drives for or what are some of the best uses for these drives in my opinion? In my case, for reviving older laptops with SATA um, SATA drive inputs on them or an old desktop unit and I'll be doing just that reviving some old laptops on this channel. I would probably stress to you to only use these drives for non-critical data storage as they may or may not have questionable build quality but I'm not saying that it's just a practice that you should do anyways and that would be backing up your data frequently and if it's something that you care not to lose just be careful with what you use them for as with any disk hard disk ssd nvme it's just a general good practice some pluses you probably already thought of or already knew replacing an old mechanical drive with these cheap ssds like reviving an old laptop or desktop like i stated can give you a substantial speed boost over their mechanical counterparts. And for these prices, it, it's like a no brainer to try it out and do so. They also use less power and noise compared to the old mechanical hard drives. Of the cheap budget optioned SSDs that I did the rudimentary testing on today, what would I suggest going with as my option? I'd either go with the wall RAM or the wow disk and either one of those that you can get the higher capacities like 256 gig or 500 gig for the cheapest amount. And with today's rising costs and SSDs and NVMe storage, Hey, it's kind of a no brainer to search out these options and hopefully some of these tests provide some rudimentary data that can actually help you in making your decision. These SSDs of course are going to drop off for their transfer speeds. The more data that they transfer across, it's just something that you need to know. And I mentioned it before, that's one downfall. So thanks for coming along with me on this journey to test out some of these cheap SSDs. So thanks for watching. Remember this tech.